Hi, my name is Benjamin Kepner of Global Social Media Marketing, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up Google Funnel conversion tracking in order to visualize how people are interacting with your brand and establishing where there might be potential bottlenecks on some of your landing pages of your website. So if we're going to create some Google Analytics goals around some of our social paid advertising, for example, for today's video, we'll show some examples of Facebook, YouTube, as well as Google. We would go into goals and we would see the different goals that we've created. So for today's example, I'm going to be bringing up a form fill. Um, so we're generating leads, right? And I've got that titled. Um, I've got it as a custom form down here. Then if we click into goal details, you'll see that I've selected begins with. There's going to be another video that we'll talk more about regular expression. But for now, let's use begins with. And the best option for that is because of e-commerce. Uh, we can track if there's multiple phone numbers, for example, if, if there's going to be purchases of the same product with different SKUs, SKU numbers, for example. So we're going to use begins with our thank you confirmation page once the person fills out the form. So not the actual form itself. So we'll give that a value of $10 and then look at our funnel and we'll see now that we're going to turn on the funnel, we're going to be able to track all the steps that potentially convert in that final conversion goal of the thank you confirmation page. So before that, we have potentially the landing page, right? So I've got that pulled up already here for today's example, right? This would be our given landing page. So let's say I go through this. This is my now thank you confirmation page, right? So this is what I want to track. We've got that in there. So landing page. And because we're doing a targeted Google ad campaign, or for example, our YouTube ad, we're gonna just leave it as that and not have our homepage. So that's one example, right? So next thing that we might be looking at is if we were trying to do like an actual e-commerce transaction, right, versus leads. So let's say that we're booking a ticket or a travel destination. We're going to Punta Cana and we're, we're booking that thank you confirmation page. We wanna give it a destination once we continue into the goal details, we're going to have more of a process, right? We want to be able to track every step of that funnel that potentially converts onto a sale of a website. So a user may start on the home page and then go to the Putakana landing page, go to the checkout page, and then actually finally book. So as you can see, we've added the different steps along this funnel, given it a value, tracked it again with begins with, and allowed it for opportunities to convert on e-commerce. You can see these best practices that I have where it's got the slash before and then the name of the page slash again after that. So these are the best practices for setting those up. So that's an example of an e-commerce sales transaction versus the lead transaction that we just showed you. One important thing, if we're driving social media campaigns to these different types of Google Analytics goals, then we would be able to also track those via the Google campaign URL builder. For example, if I wanted to take the same landing page and put our source as YouTube with a medium of social media for the campaign Punta Cana Save Now discovery ad, I would know that that is the ad that is converting the given lead generation or potential sales conversions. So as you can see there, we, that would be something that we would want to use in our Facebook ad campaigns, for example. We would take that. And best practice here, for example, if we were using an audience, and let's say that we've got a web lead uh, for an example, we would go in and then go into ad set name. And when we get to the ads, we would want to make sure that we have the location of tracking this campaign. So usually Facebook would prefer to be in the website URL, not using the bit.ly link. That's why I haven't converted it here. But for other examples, it may work very well. Giving it a nice display link is also beneficial, but really just having that so that when the user clicks and they land on that page, you can see that exact tracking of that campaign. So let's say we go back to our now homepage of Google Analytics and we clicked into conversions and then we scrolled down to goals 
And then within that, we should be able to see our funnels for the different Google Analytics tools that we've created. We can segment them as here. So let's just show, for example, with our recent form fill, we can see the conversions and actually see the conversion rate that is happening at the bottom of the funnel from the landing page to the form fill to the thank you confirmation page. If we wanted to show another example, here's an example of an e-commerce transactional page that we showed if we were guiding the consumer from a home page to a landing page to a checkout page and then a final purchase of that conversion of that funnel. So these are some different ways on how to use a sales funnel in order to track any of your social media or Google ads campaigns to make sure that you're understanding where your audiences are, how you can improve bounce rates or bottlenecks in your funnel.